This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. You know, in this case, Tony, the number one piece of evidence that I think are the ace that, that the prosecution is holding are these five confessions that, again, weren't to law enforcement. They were recorded on uh, prison, maximum security prison house phones. Mm-hmm. That is going to be... For me, I just want to hear those. I want to see if he is sounding in his right mind or delirious. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I'm assuming we're going to hear those in court. Uh, obviously, that you know could be up for debate if, it, if in fact, it doesn't necessarily play to the prosecution uh, because it doesn't sound like someone's in their right mind. Are we going to hear that? Or, or could it, I mean, could that even be used as a defense for Richard Allen. I mean, it seems like an interesting one to pull up a confession in court to use to your defense, but could that actually happen if, in fact, it does sound like there's something very mentally wrong going on with Richard Allen? Well, I think they'll come in because they were obtained legally. Mm-hmm. I don't think it'll they'll be able to uh, fight that. It'll be the, the skew that each side paints uh, mm-hmm. of it. You know, obviously, the prosecution is going to say, well, Oh, listen, it's in his own words. He's talking to his mom and his wife. And the defense is going to say, yeah, after being locked up in a maximum security prison, you know, from CVS counter and, uh, you know, a, a middle class home, normal life to being in a maximum security penitentiary, he lost his mind. He was mm-hmm. eating paper. I mean, all you have to do is look at pictures of Richard Allen and know his physical state was just terrible. Um, and that affects mental state. So I'll be very interested to see and hear, or I should say hear only, hear those conversations and the arguments made about them. I think it's interesting, though, I believe they withdrew the mm-hmm. motion for the records, yeah. his uh, medical records. They did. Uh, Prosecutor Nick McClelland filed a motion to withdraw his most recent request for Richard Allen's mental health records. Uh, That would be because he got access to them when he shouldn't have had access to them the way that they were filed. Uh, But somehow he got access to them and then like, oh, I'm going to take these back. I don't need them. I shouldn't have even known that these existed like this. Uh, You can have them back. That I found rather interesting. Just kind of more bizarreness going on uh, behind the curtain uh, of Delphi. How much do you think mental health is going to play a, a role in uh, this trial, whether it be for the defense or the prosecution of Richard Allen? I think it's going to play a huge role as it pertains to those confessions. I think that is going to be uh, the crux of which uh, the defense is going to try to, uh, you know, bring forth that, listen, these confessions aren't real confessions. They're uh, you know, words of a of a madman who was driven mad because of his conditions. I think that's going to be, you know, they're, they're going to have to convince a jury of that because depending on what's said on them, uh, they could be quite damning if he provides information or details that either weren't known or that uh, fall in line with the crime scene photos, which at least at that point, no one saw. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's going to be, be interesting. I shouldn't say that because I guess he would have seen them as a part of discovery. But remember, there were all sorts of issues with his defense attorneys even be able being able to pass documents to him to view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting whether how much he's even how much he has even been able to help in his own defense. It will. Uh, I mean, it, the interview that was done with the attorney that uh, his name escapes me at the second, uh, but he was the one who was basically kind of the fill in uh, between uh, when uh, Rosie and Baldwin were kicked off the case. Then you had the other one come in and his testimony, his uh, experience with Richard Allen uh, in that maximum security prison, literally having to sit outside his door and try to communicate through a little hole. Uh, I I think that in itself was extremely telling of of how this is all going. Yeah, it it was terrible. And, and, you know, having to keep his distance in the passing of documents, I don't know how a person can possibly help in their own defense if they can't read their documents and aren't seeing their, their attorneys on a very, very regular basis. 
uh, we don't even know how much uh, uh, Rossi and Baldwin have been able to see him. No. Um, but they want to move forward. I think it's a brilliant move on their part because it couldn't be denied by the judge. And moreover, uh, now everything is sped up. She has to make decisions uh, regarding the Franks hearing and all this other uh, imp- or motions that have been filed. So it was pretty brilliant, I think, uh, to light a fire under it. How much of a slam dunk case is it when he turns around and eventually sues the state? <laughs> because... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, it depends. I mean, you know, I always in this situation, I I want to know what's always bothered me is what happened that got their spotlight back on Richard Allen. I just think there's something that we're not seeing that has to do with him either confessing to somebody or or some nugget like that, Mm -hmm. that now, you know, that they knew to go back to him. Sure. And I'm not buying the whole thing. Well, you know, we reviewed again. That, no, I'm not buying that. There was something stronger than that uh, that led them to reinvestigate him, I believe. Yeah. Just what is that? And that may may be a bombshell that we find out during the uh, the trial, or it may be like, really? This is what <laughs> this is what has <laughs> kept you going. This really uh, it, there, there, there's no, uh, I, I think, length to how strange this case can get, and there's still a lot of time uh, to come. In it. Yeah, I agree, Tony. And and all all that said, whether he's guilty or whether he's innocent, the way he has been treated throughout this process is diabolical yeah. and should never happen on our criminal justice systems. I keep asking uh, via Twitter, via social media, uh, via mainstream media find one more case for me where somebody was uh, put in a maximum security prison pre-conviction unless they did something in jail, mm-hmm. you know, threatened somebody's life yeah. or escaped or something like that. Find, find that case for me. I'm still waiting. Yeah. You'll, you will be waiting forever. This is going to be <laughs> the one that people talk about. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.